Hi folks, so um, looking at uh, GDP, GNP, GNI and GNDI. Uh, just something to point out straight away that um, GDP is a measure, when you see P, it's a measure of, of product of goods and services. And income, when you see I, it's more a measure of, of, of wealth, of income, when you see the I. So just to distinguish between the two of those there. Okay, here we go. So um, to go, uh, I'm here on the CSO website and... Um, if you look up CSO and then go to um, national income, you'll, you'll find this table here where it goes through the big four. There's GDP, there's GNP, there's GNI, and there's GNDI. So um, a question that would have come up on the old course and I'd expect it to come up on the new course as well is how do you get from one to the other? Uh, the question used to be what's the relationship between say GDP and GNI or GNP and GNDI? How do you get from one to the other? Um, and um, I'm going to go through that now in relation to um, Ireland's 2020 figures. So here we go. We start with GDP. Start is there, 372 billion. And um, GNP was 282 billion. And the way we got from GDP to GNP is we added on net factor income from the rest of the world, which was minus 90 billion. Now, most other countries in the world, they're adding on a positive number. But Ireland is unique because we have 1,500 multinational companies in Ireland and they send out their profits, they send them home back to California or wherever they're from at the end of the year. So that money leaves Ireland. So I'm going to zoom in on that in a little bit more detail now, just that minus 90 billion. So I'm going to, and I'll come back to this slide then. So looking at the minus 90 billion for a minute. So I have here net factor income from the rest of the world of minus 90 billion and we have um, an Irish entrepreneur, Dennis O'Brien. And he represents, in this example, Irish factors of production, in this case, enterprise. Irish factors. And he's abroad. He has um, business interests in the Bahamas and the Caribbean. He's an Irish um, entrepreneur and he has operations abroad. And the money or the profits he makes from those operations, they come back into Ireland uh, every year. So his profits come in to Ireland at the end of the year. So that's in. So I made up this figure of 10 billion just for, for talk's sake, so it's not a real figure. So let's pretend all the Dennis O'Briens uh, that there are out there are sending back 10 billion euro a year to Ireland from their businesses abroad. And then on the other side of the coin, then you have people like Tim Cook from Apple, and there's 1,500 Tim Cooks, there's 1,500 multinational companies. So there's 1,500 of these guys, and um, at the end of the year, they're sending their profits. In this case, I've ma I made up an example here of 100 billion. They're sending money out of Ireland. So that's leaving the country. So these are foreign factors of production, foreign entrepreneurs based in Ireland with operations in Ireland to send the money out, send the money home. So again, in my made up figures of 10 and 100 here, if 10 comes back and 100 leaves, then overall we're down 90 billion. And as I said, other countries would have a positive figure for net factor income from the rest of the world. Ireland is unique because we've got 1500 of these guys um, sending money out. Okay, so that's the, the relationship between GDP and GNP. Okay, now the next one in the list, um, as the way the CSE will do it, they do GDP, GNP. So next up is GNP to GNI. So we'll do that next. So to go from GNP to GNI, um, we add on sources of income for the nation. So a source of income for the nation is uh, EU su subsidies. So we got 1.5 billion in EU subsidies. That might be, for example, maybe... Um, farm subsidies for example so that's a source of income to the nation so that's we add that up we add that on and then uh, money that the nation loses where well, we we pay taxes to the eu uh, 400 million in 2020 so we add the money that comes in we we subtract we deduct what we pay the eu and that brings us to our gross national income figure gni of 283 billion let's go back here so you see there 282 add 1.5 minus 0.4 brings us to 283 billion euro okay i'll keep going um next up we want to go from gni to gndi so to get from there to there okay and the way we do this is we add current transfers from the rest of the world and we deduct current transfers to the rest of the world so i'll leave that there for a moment while you take it down Now, before I talk about 
current transfers think about transfer payments for a minute um transfer payments when we're we're doing this with these with the students we tell them they're like social welfare payments you get your you get your children's allowance for talk's sake but you don't provide a factor of production you don't provide anything in return for the for the children's allowance or if you're on job seekers allowance while you're on it you, you get the transfer payment but you don't provide a factor of production likewise that's that's why i'm focusing on the word transfers here current transfers from the rest of the world that's money that's given to ireland but we don't we don't give anything in return for it it's a bit like a social welfare payment but on a, a national scale so maybe for example if um, um, uh, a rich american donated money to an irish hospital okay a philanthropist donated money to an irish university or hospital that would be a, a source of income for the nation so that would get uh, that would be added right and then think for example uh, we give social welfare payments in a way we give aid to foreign countries i think in 2020 we gave 873 million in aid through irish aid for example and we all make money donations to charity and stuff like that and that money leaves ireland so um, and we don't expect that and back in return so that's a current transfer to the rest of the world now current transfers to the rest of the world are bigger than current transfers from the rest of the world now the CSO don't give us the breakdown of both of them, so all I can give you is the net figure. When you combine them, current transfers uh, net overall are minus 3.8 billion. So we, we give 3.8 billion more than we receive. So that brings us down to, I rounded off the figures, uh, gross national uh, dis no, um, disposable income of, of 280 uh, billion euro. Okay. Um, go back to our slide here so there we have it you, you see it there they say um current transfers from the rest of the world and then current transfers to the rest of the world and then g and di is there i rounded off to 280 billion now g and di can be broken down into two things consumption expenditure and savings so the cf figure 279 they further break that down into um consumption expenditure that 279 can be broken down into 140 billion spent in the shops by me and you and savings the level of savings of 140 billion just just over just under 140 billion there 139 so that's what uh, g and di breaks down to c and s okay those two figures there okay um some definitions for gdp and GNP and GNI and GNDI. They're there on the screen now. So I'll leave them there for a moment. Or what you can do is you can pause the video if you want to write down your definitions for GDP, GNP, GNI and GNDI. So pause the video now and you can you can take them down if you need them. Okay, we move on. Um, this is another one I have from the CSO. Um, okay, so um, you see there... Okay, I'll start off with my pen. Here we go. Um, there's This is like y equals c plus i plus g plus x minus m. So there's c. Okay, so there's c. And then capital formation. That's i. That's right here. i. And then uh, g. There's, there's g. c plus i plus g. Then there's x. And there's M, and we subtract. See, there's a minus sign all the way across there. We subtract imports, and that gives us Y. And what is Y? Y equals GDP at current market prices. So that's how we arrive at GDP at current market prices. I, I'm guessing, I'm not 100% sure, would that suffice as a definition for GDP at current market prices? Possibly not, probably need the sentence. But um, that's how we calculate GDP. It's C plus I plus G plus x minus m brings us to gdp and then we go on the journey again there's gdp to gnp and it's the same figures i had a few minutes ago see them over there and there's gnp to gni okay subsidies and taxes there um this this uh, table doesn't go as far as gndi unfortunately um okay that's that um okay modified gni then so i'll just do modified gni with you now so I don't know if this is on the course or not, or if students need to know it or not. Um, 
I just don't know but I'll do it now and, and it's up to yourself then if you think it's worth doing with the students I would touch on it I'd give it maybe 20 minutes just in case it came up okay G and I asterisk and then we all look for the asterisk to see what does the asterisk stand for well it doesn't it stands for the word modified so when you see G and I asterisk it means modified G and I now Ireland is the only country in the world that has such a figure called modified GNI. It came about in 2014 to 2015 when our GDP rose by 26% in one year. And we became a bit of a laughing stock on Bloomberg and CNN for a couple of days. Um, and was referred to as leprechaun economics. Um, so I suppose the CSO got criticised about how they were calculating GDP because no country in the world has ever experienced an increase in its GDP of 26% um, in one go. So um, to deal with the, the, the method, I suppose, or the problems associated with calculating GDP when we are such a globalised economy, they came up with this new method called GNI asterisk, or GNI, modified GNI. Okay, so um, here's how it's calculated coming up. Um, what I'd say to the students here is to produce modified GNI, you start with GNI and you take account of three things aircraft leasing, income of re domiciled firms, and intellectual property. Okay, and this slide here, I've, I've taken that from the CSO website. So um, I'm going to pause for a minute and, and you can pause the video as well if you want to take any of that down. Okay, um, quick explanation then into what all this is about. There's a lot of, um, there's a huge amount of companies based in Ireland that lease aircraft. Um, now, what happened was um, in 2014, 2015, I presume due to low corporation tax, a lot of them relocated to Ireland. So they relocated maybe their headquarters to Ireland. So then their assets became kind of Irish assets or assets of Irish businesses. So the aircraft that would be worth billions upon billions of euro um, became sort of Irish owned assets because aircraft leasing companies relocated here maybe from abroad. Now, it's not that the airplanes arrived here or anything, it's just the um, the business of hiring them out was done from here. So it looked like we were after getting really rich overnight when we suddenly owned all these airplanes. But, you know, so that inflated our GDP, right? It's inflated our GDP. Okay, another thing that are inflated our GDP back uh, in 2015 was, um, I have a little bit of writing up here that I refer to. Um, you might have a, a company, a small company, right, in Ireland that has a, an office here. And then uh, it, might, it, it, um, it might merge with, with a foreign company. And then the new company, is, is its headquarters is registered in Ireland. So on paper... The country looks like it's after, uh, you know, acquiring all these assets. So it might be just a small company with an office in Ireland uh, merged with a bigger company abroad. And the earnings then of the new entity kind of become Irish earnings. So that inflated GDP figures back in 2015 as well. And one more thing that inflated our figures back in 2015 was intellectual property been registered in Ireland. I presume to take advantage of our low corporation tax and the value of that intellectual property, I suppose, um, became maybe Irish assets. I'm not 100% sure, but it, on paper, it looked like we were richer. Um, so that's the line there from the CSO. That's a little bit it's a more simplified explanation of it. Um, okay, so that's um, that's that's modified GNI. Let's have a look at modified GNI. So here we are. There's GDP. So we started with GDP. And then we go to GNP, and then to GNI, and then you see the 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 redomiciled companies, the intellectual property, and aircraft leasing, right, are accounted for. And we account for those three things that I referred to in the last slide. You arrive at modified GNI, which is this thing here, GNI star of two hundred eight billion. Now, folks, there's some difference between looking at this as our measure of national income and looking at this as our measure of national income. The safest thing to do here is if the, in the exam the students are given say GDP and GNP or they're given GNP and modified GNI or, or they're given two of them maybe and they're asked which one is the best reflection 
of the standard of living of Irish residents. The safest thing to do is always go with the smaller one. Um, you know, like the profits of Apple aren't shared with me and you, so they've been they've been deducted by the time you get down here. And um, all this stuff here has been taken out of the equation. The the value of the intellectual property has been taken out of the equation. The value of those aircrafts that uh, were registered they've been taken out, and uh, the income of those redomiciled companies that suddenly you know expanded here in Ireland that has been accounted for and deducted to give a more realistic figure of the national income. So the smaller the figure that you're given in the exam, the more likely, the more accurate reflection it is of Irish. Uh, standards of living the standards of living of irish residents okay um that's that's that okay so um that's national income uh, covered there thank you